Hey guys, what's going on? Ballhawk here again, and today we're going over our week five matchup in the IPA Mulchers division. Uh, this week we're playing against Pokédex holder Orange, and he is the coach of the Wilmington Weebots. And let's hop into the matchup. So these are the teams. And uh, so looking at his team on the right, he's got a very scary, but yet, you know, very well balanced team, in my opinion, um, highlighted by Mega Charizard Y and Zero Aura. Uh, the fact that he's got Mega Charizard Y kind of deters me from bringing Rillaboom or Mega Aegron. Um, and it's really got me second guessing things like Golurk and Cloyster as well. His Charizard is able to do a lot of things, you know, with uh, Sun Moose, Weather Balls, uh, or just Flamethrower if he wants to run that, go that route uh, for a more well balanced uh, fire attack. Or, um, you know, he's got Air Slash, he's got Focus Blast, he's got. Uh, solar Beam for Golurk and Cloyster. Uh, there's, there's just, it's very threatening, and it's hard to really justify bringing uh, Rillaboom and Mega Aegon this week, just solely because of Charizard, um, even though they do so well against the rest of his team. Um, and then, outside of that, I like the matchup that Rotom, Rotom Fan has in this game. Uh, his team is very... If his, if his team is susceptible, susceptible to one thing, um, it's flying in electric coverage. Um, and again, kind of like last week, um, I already played the game, and so I'm going over this hindsight. Um, and, you know, now that I'm thinking about it a little more, uh, Rillaboom, Mega Aggron, plus Rotom Fan might have been a good quarterback to this game, um, just because, you know, the fact that he's got Mega Charizard Y, I could have baited out, could have baited him out with Rillaboom and Mega Aggron, and then, um, you know, gone after it with things like Mew or Gudra and then open the door for Cloyster late game. But um, anyway, I like the, the matchup that Rotom Fan is, it has in this game. Um, I also like Rotom, or I like Gudra being a special wall, being able to shut his, his Charizard down and threaten things like Gudra, or like Tangrowth or Corviknight, um, especially if he wants to set up the sun for me. Uh, sun boosted flamethrowers are gonna do a lot to his team. Um, just has, or, uh, Gudra just has a lot of good coverage against him in general, so I, I don't see any way that I'm going to bring or leave him behind. Um, Cloyster has a great matchup as well. Um, as soon as I'm able to get off, get off a Shell Smash, Cloyster is able. Is it just so threatening against him? Um, you know, having super effective stab against you know half of his team just about. Uh, it's it's hard to hard. For, it'd be hard for him to deal with. Um, and then I like Galore, uh to the, <clears throat> you know being able if I'm able to get off another rock or a rock polish, being able to outspeed everything including Zero Aura uh, and fire off you know hard Poltergeist Rock Slide. Earthquake combinations, uh, it's gonna be hard for him to deal with. And so I definitely see Galurk having a spot in, in this week's team. Um, Sylveon, just there to do what it does. The only thing that really threatens it um, is uh, Weezing and Corviknight. Everything else, I think Sylveon's able to kind of deal with um, or kind of block out uh, you know, to an extent. Um, so Lazo, I'm thinking about just because outside of Zero Aura, it's gonna be the fastest thing on the field. And he's already gonna be setting up the sun for me and fire. Poison does well against him as well. So I'm thinking about that. Gujar's just kind of an afterthought. It's kind of there just because that's the only one that I'm I'm, I'm not sure that I'm not going to bring. Um, really boom, mega egg around him. Only I was kind of you know very very sure that I wasn't going to bring those two, those three. So X Paul just kind of there. Um, you know I I suppose I could probably just just uh, do this. Um, and there. <laughs> That, that makes it a little better on me. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to bring those bottom four. Um, and so I'm really just debating whether I'm going to bring uh, Galurk or Salazzle in that last spot, um, or Sylveon. Um, any combination of those three for the last two spots. Um, I I don't see him bringing Leveny, um, or Audino, or Dredagon. Um, uh, one thing I didn't realize is that... Uh, One thing I was kind of preparing for was maybe the fact that Audino could come, um, but his team is kind of thick as it is in, in certain spots, and so I'm not sure how how viable it is for him to bring Audino anyway. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's the that's the uh, matchup. So let's hop into the team that I brought. Starting things off, we've got Shy Guy uh, holding a King's Rock with the scaling ability, and the goal here is to get off a Shell Smash and wreak havoc. Um, and maybe 
smart to think about leading Cloyster just to make sure that I'm able to get some damage off just because if you want to lead something like Tangrowth or, um, you know, Crocodile, then Cloyster's going to be in a pretty decent spot because I don't think it could drain from Tangrowth is going to knock out Cloyster. I could be wrong, but... Um, could also just fire off an Ice Spear right away without Shell Smashing if he leads Tangrowth and, and uh, shoot for a, a flinch. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we're going to run uh, King's Rock Skill Link, Shell Smash, Icicle Spear, Rock Blast, and Ice Shard. Um, just the, the Stab, Ice Spear, and the Rock Blast there for everything else, pretty much. Um, 250, just going max speed, uh, max attack with him as well. Uh, I don't really see any reason not to just do 252 EVs on close to this week. Um, and we're going to go on Adamant Nature, just to make sure we get as much uh, power off each hit as we can. Next up, we've got Densissima, holding leftovers with the hydration ability. And I may have outsmarted myself a little bit with this one. Um, I'm going to try to get a little too gimmicky. Uh, I, I convinced myself that I needed to fight the sun, and I'm not sure why, <laughs> why I thought it crept into my mind. Um, Gujra, I think, would have been much better just, you know, an assault vest with lots of coverage. But nonetheless, uh, I decided to run a bit of a gimmicky set with Rain Dance, Weather Ball, Ice Beam, and Rest um, using the Hydration ability. And hyd what Hydration does, um, if you're unaware, is that um, in Rain, at the end of the turn, Gudra will be cured of any status ailment that it has. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when using that is that if it is the last turn of Rain, um, basically whatever, you know, w when Rain decides if it's going to go for one more turn or not, uh, that that decision is made before hydration is, is or, uh, takes effect. So let's say, for example, um, it's the last turn of rain and I decide to go for a rest with Gujo. Um, the rain will end before Gujo's hydration is checked. So um, effectively, the la there's there's four turns of rain where you'll be able to rest um, for free. So that's just one thing to keep in mind whenever you use a hydration uh, rain dance rest set on any Pokemon. Um, so, but yeah, I, I thought, you know, hey, Holding or running Weather Ball on, on Gujo, um, it would give me effectively two two different moves um, with fire and water coverage, because uh, he's already going to bring the fire in the in, in the drought for Mega Charizard, and I'll just bring the rain. And so I thought that was maybe a uh, a cheeky way to, to get maybe a fifth move on there, if you will, um, with the fire water coverage and then the ice beam and then running rust and rain. Uh, so, but. Um, as you'll see, I don't I don't think it worked out that that, <laughs> that well, and uh, I maybe better just uh, stick to you know what these things what these guys are good for next week or um, in the coming weeks. But um, anyway, I wanted to go 248 HP for uh, max odd HP points, and then uh, 88 special attack and 172 defense. And uh, with the modest ability, it allows us to hit pretty hard and tank some physical attacks. That is our Gujo. Next up, we've got Peach, holding the leftovers with the Pixelate ability, using Wish, Hyper Voice, Mystical Fire, and Protect. We're going to go full Special Defense this week, uh, with 252 HP and Special Defense putting the rest of the last four into HP with a or in, uh, Special Attack with a Calm Nature. What this will do is it just basically says that Sylveon's going to be there to bulk all the Special Attacks that it can. Um, Mystical Fire is going to be there for boosting Fire Attacks in the Sun, and Hyper Voice is just there to you know, do what it does. Um, looking to wish protect and just kind of keep the team as healthy as I can with Sylvia and um, just kind of you know ride some some things out maybe stall out the sun a couple of times you know who knows. Next up we've got Mew Girl and Mew Girl is going to ride Colberberry with, with uh, Roost, Triple Axle, Flip Turn, and Rock Slide. And so this is here to you know if we can outspeed Mega Charizard um, or win the speed tie, Rock Slide is going to knock it out outright. And then flip turns there for just you know super effective momentum on things like Crocodile and Charizard after the Sun of Dawn. And then triple axles there for things like Tangrowth um, or Eleveny should he choose to bring it. And then Roost is just there for longevity. We're gonna go with the Jolly Max Speed, and then uh, we're gonna split HP and Attack, and then put the last four into Special Defense. Secondly, we've got or uh, fifthly I should say we've got Rotom Fan. We've got our groupie here, holding leftovers with the levitate ability. 
and group B is going to be running Air Slash, Bolt Squish, Thunder Wave, and Will O Wisp. I decided to go dual sta or dual status this week uh, because if I can burn things like Krugadile or Tangrowth um, or Corviknight even, uh, it just kind of cripples them and makes it easier for me to set up on th with things like Cloyster or Mew or a Galurk. And then Thunder Wave is there to cripple things that aren't Krugadile, uh, make them super slow for the same reason, or just to be able to hit them super effective with a slower mod. And so we're gonna go to uh, standard 248 HP, and then 108 speed EVs is just there to outspeed. Um, I wanna say... I can't remember what it's there to outspeed, but um, I'm hitting some speed benchmark with, with that 108 speed and a 10 nature. And then uh, the rest is just getting pumped into special defense field to make sure I can take as many hits from Charizard or Tangrowth or um, Zero Aura. Or, you know, just whatever, you know, what have you. So, and then lastly, we've got Sentry, our Golurk. And this week, we're going to slap a weakness policy on him with the Iron Fist ability. And he's going to run Rock Polish, Poltergeist, Close Combat, and Fire Punch. And the thought here is that once I get a Rock Polish up, I'm um, assuming that he's going to hit me with a super effective attack the first turn. He's going to be there to outspeed everything and hit everything super effectively with Close Combat, Fire Punch, and Poltergeist. Um, he's you know, at plus two with 108 speed EVs and agile nature. Golurk is going to outspeed uh, zero aura. And then after that, I decided to split uh, the attack and defense. And hopefully we can get some mileage out of Golurk this week. I've been trying to use him a little more the last couple weeks and I'm using him as somewhat of a, of a hole puncher, um, but it just kind of hasn't worked out. So we're going to try it again this week and see if we can hit. And uh, next up is the battle. All right, so. He brought just about everything I thought he would, except for Leveny. Leveny was a bit of a surprise. Um, we decided to leave with Golurk and try to get up our Rock Palace Weakness Policy right away. He plays into that and gives us Giga Drain to proc our Weakness Policy. And so at this point, we're thinking, hey, maybe Fire Punch will knock him out. However, it only does just over half, so I forget just how tanky Tangrowth is. Um, I definitely needed to maybe chip him away a little more. Um, so anyway, after that, we've had, we get a free switch into Mew Girl, and I go for a... Uh, triple axle just to see if we can get Tangrowth out. Um, that crit was kind of nice. Uh, unfortunate for him, um, but in the end it didn't really affect things too much. This next turn really sucked. <laughs> Rock Slide there would have changed things tremendously in this game, I believe. Um, but we missed. His Charizard was able to live and Mew Girl lost 90% HP for free, <laughs> essentially. And uh, so that, that, was, that really hurt. Um, anyway, he switches out to Snapper knowing that we outspeed him now. Um, it wasn't just a speed tie, I don't think. And uh, with that, we switch up to our uh, our Rotom Pan. We can try to Will Wisp in this turn, just to try to you know, cripple him a little bit as much as we can. And uh, we were allowed to connect, so that was nice. And gain back a little bit of HP with our leftovers. And then decide to switch out into Density Symbol to try to reserve, preserve Rotom Fan a little bit. Um, and now we're in a good position, I think, to just kind of fire off some, some attacks or set up the rain. I can't remember which one I do here. Um, I do just set up the rain, okay. And then... Yeah, we go for the weather ball gimmick, and so that, <laughs> that worked out pretty nicely, actually. Um, here, it did anyway. Uh, it gets some good damage. It's a 3 hit KO on, on this, or on uh, Weezing. Uh, I'm not sure what Sled Bomb would have done. Uh, but anyway, one more one more turn and Weezing is gone, for sure. Except he has Pain Split. <laughs> so that was annoying. Um, I didn't see that coming. And so that kind of changed things a little bit. So we run out to Groupie, hoping that maybe we can get a little bit of HP back ourselves with another Pain Split. Um, but he has to go for a second to run with Therapy. Uh, and so now we just go for an Air Slash. And that does a lot more damage than I thought it would. Um, as he switches back out to Krugadile. And so at this point, Krugadile is in a position to KO Rona Fan, so I don't want that. I'm going to switch him out back into Dentissima and try to set Brain again if we're able to live. But a, that defense drop was very unfortunate. Uh, that changed things a bit. And so we opt to switch out to Peach and just tank his Crunch attack. Uh, I believe this next turn we just go for a Hyper Voice. No, we go for a Wish. And I believe we switch back out to Rotom here, hoping that, nope, we stay in, and we just go for a Mystical Fire. And that is a tanky special, or especially tanky uh, Corviknight. Um, 
he goes for a roost. Just trying to, you know, trading blows here. He's preserving himself. We go for another mystical fire. It doesn't really do much. Um, and so I don't remember how much longer I, I kind of stayed in this, but I don't believe it was too much longer as, it, as we get an unfortunate flinch. Um, that that kind of sucked. Um, I don't remember what move I was going to go for there, but nonetheless, it didn't really matter, I guess. Um, uh, a wish would have been... Uh, getting that wish off would have been very nice, though. Um, heading back into Groupie this this turn and you know being able to uh, get a, get his HP up. Groupie just had a great matchup in this game. Um, we go for a Will O Wisp, and he reads that goes out to Charizard. A uh, Volt Switch would have been nice that turn. I thought about doing it, um, but ultimately <laughs> I don't know why I did. As he switches out, or as I switch out to Gudra, he goes for a Flamethrower. Uh, one more Flamethrower, and Gudra is pretty much pretty much gone. Um, and so we allow him to just, we just give him Gudra at this point. As we bring our Mew Girl back out. And here we're going to try to get his Charizard. Um, at least, you know, get some kind of trade here. Um, but he, he switches out to Crocodile. We get our Rock Slide. And so here we just switch out immediately to Sylveon as he goes for a high horsepower. Take Sylveon. And we're now down 3-0 as he reveals that he's Moxie. Now that the sun is not up, um, we go out to Groupie. And I believe we called a switch there. Yes, we did. We believe I called a switch out as he lives with one HP on his Charizard. Um, so we bring Cloyster in, go for the Ice Shard. At this point, at least it's not a 6-0. <laughs> this battle was definitely not... It, it seemed like it was heading towards that. That direction as he brings out his Leveny and he reveals that he's choice banded and it's game over. <laughs> yeah, I did not expect a choice banded Leveny. Uh, that's the only way that he was able to one hit KO closer, and so it was pretty obvious at that point. Um, but uh, yeah, very, very good team prep on his part. Um, unfortunate that we weren't able to get the rock slide early on in the game, and uh, I think that would have changed things quite a bit. You know, not even worry about Charizard a little anymore. Um, and being able to keep Rain up to threaten things like his Crocodile or his Weezing. Um, but yeah, that's that's three games in a row now that we've dropped, and we're in a very dire situation this season. Uh, we started off two and zero, very strong. Dropped to two and three now. Uh, week five with two weeks left, and we need to effectively win out in order to guarantee ourselves a spot in the playoffs. Um, so it's two seasons in a row is going to come down pretty pretty close to the wire here in the IPA. Um, so let's see if we can, we'll see if we can pull it out again. Um, that was very well played, very well played game by uh, um, Pokedex holder Orange. Uh, he, he brought a good team and uh, yeah, can't, I have nothing to be upset about <laughs> other than the rock slide miss. Uh, uh, choice band leveny was especially nice brain uh, an especially nice brain um and the fact that it has chlorophyll i i don't know why i didn't even think about that before like it, it kind of makes a lot of sense you know hindsight um but uh yeah good game and uh i'll see you guys next week peace